Hello, bonjour, buenos dias, namaste, hajime maste, hajime maste, ni hao, assalamu alaikum, everybody out there in the internet, welcome to Chan with Tekken for April 2024, um, so Chan with Tekken, if you don't know, it's basically three things, um, videos I'm working on for the channel, changes the stuff on the channel, IRL stuff, it's like a, it's like a, you know, <coughs> that's like the main uh template it's it's need it needs work and updated i just haven't gotten around to it but yeah um but that's like the main three things or some other stuff in there but i'm just gonna blow through this because you know <laughs> yeah um so videos i'm working on man uh i just finished Eden chronicles 100 heroes that game is great um yeah if you're into jrpgs uh specifically turn-based jrpgs and you like sui code and it's like man that <sighs> blast from the past man just <clears throat> it like hits all the notes and it looks uh it, it's so weird because like it looks like a throwback but it plays like a modern game so like i'm playing it and I kind of get the same vibe of when um, I was playing the Sea of Stars last year, and I'm like, man, this game, it looks like a game from the 90s, but it has, like, the, you know, like, the mechanics and the, like, just the feel of something that plays, like, a modern game, you know, just it just it just looks like it's from a previous era, but you play it, and it's like, you know, it has the, <coughs> all the, um, like, the modern sensibilities from a design, uh, you know, perspective of like, okay, this is this way, and this is that way. It's from a, like, you know, or this, the things in this game work this way because they work this way, and this is how we want them to work, and it all works, and it's a very cohesive whole, and it's just, it's fantastic. Like, basically, this game is a successor to um, Sui Koden, so there's a, it's got like all that stuff in it. It's got like a ton of units that you can recruit, it's got uh, the big battles, man, that was great to do. Because those, those are some of my favorite moments of the first two games, was, like, just the chaos that would ensue of just, like, you've got, like, your big, your big, uh, alliance against the, like, whatever, uh, imperial forces that you're going against in whatever game, and just, like, trying to, like, rock, paper, scissors on the, they changed it up a bit in this one, they made it, they made, they made it more streamlined, though, it's, like, not as, um, you know, just, like, yeah, they made it, like, more streamlined and not as chaotic of just, like, you know, you've got... <coughs> You've got your units that you're recruited that are within the within your you know forces that you're that you're battling it out with on the battlefield, and then like you know you have like the mages get taken out by like the other team's archers or something, and then like one of your <laughs> one of your units dies or something, and like they're dead forever. And it's like what like that they they kind of like completely took that out, which is fine with me, but that's that was what made the those battles in the first two like so just like intense and stressful it's just like oh crap i could like lose units permanently from these things and like it's just intense battles it's just insane but oof, it's it's back it's great um i mean it's not the same it's not one-to-one -one, but man i really always enjoyed those and then yeah this one it's like it's it's really cool because it's basically i'm like playing it right as i'm playing i'm like looking at it and i'm like this looks like a ps2 game but then like i'm playing it i'm like <laughs> but it plays like a modern game and it's got like fast travel like everywhere after a certain point and like it's instant and i'm like but it's got bells and whistles from a ps5 game and i'm just like it's just a magical throwback of just <clears throat> gr not, i'm not gonna say jrpg perfected but just like it's like one of the top tier jrpgs series that ever existed to finally like come back after a long hiatus and just null everything and it's just like dude so i think good and then like before i played that one um Starting to get very animated here. I'm just very like I like like really enjoy that game, but um like before I played that I played Union Chronicles Rising, which was the prequel <coughs> slash prologue game, which was basically just like a introduction to the world of Union Chronicles, and that was really good. Um, it was funny because there's no voice acting. I didn't know there was no voice acting, and so I played and I was like, ooh, I hope there's voice acting in the Hundred Heroes, which which there is, thank goodness, because oof, that was that was weird. And then it's like, yeah, man. It's kind of like the same thing that happened with, um... I mean, I guess thinking about it, it's, 
see a Star Trek Nintendo voice acting, but that's but that 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 one definitely for sure feels like a Super Nintendo throwback um, JRPG. So it's not really as I mean it's noticeable, but it's like it's not as um, I can't think of the word impactful, I guess, on the experience you're having. Whereas like in in Rising, dude, I'm just like, man, this is weird. There's no voice acting in this game. It, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, it, it, I mean, it's fine without it, but like, it's just, it, you, like, not having it makes you appreciate it more when you come to 100 Heroes and it's in there and you're just like, yeah. And it's kind of cool because you meet some of the characters from that game previously in Rising and then you, like, hear them after you've had the, you know, read all this text and be like, oh, what does this character sound like? like or that effect from, like, you know, read a book or something and, like, you see a movie and, like, they adapt it and it's like, <laughs> oh, this is how they made this character sound or, like, you know, you got those things going on. Um, Cause like like after you meet Gru, like after a while he starts saying mate, and I was like, okay he's a kangaroo. Does he have a Australian accent? I'm sh- I'm curious. And then like they gave him a Australian accent, accent sort of sure enough. So that was that was great. Um, but yeah, that was great. I was just I absolutely loved it. Rising. It was such a. I mean, it starts. It's it's like one of the the, the slowest games I've played at the very like first ninety minutes, like the very start, the first third of the game, super slow. But it like has that like forty five degree arc into like a straight up like just of just like it gets so good at the end, and it's just like ah so yeah just yeah it totally delivers, and like the pacing is like kind of like you know. I'm not gonna say it's bad, but it's it just it's just slow. But then it, it it picks up and it like you know it doesn't let, let back. It's it's great or um or it picks up and doesn't you know <laughs> it keeps going. But um but yeah man, uh, Eden Hundred Hero Heroes definitely definitely worth your, worth your time when you're if you're into if you're into those games because I'm still playing it and then um there's like seven units I need to get. I'm probably gonna new game plus playthrough. I just really enjoyed it. It's just, it was just, it was just refreshing, I guess, because I just played um, Rebirth, right? And like that's, that's like, you know, they took turn-based and they threw it out for an action RPG system. I mean, I'm not gonna get into the whole, like, you know, remake and Rebirth. I do enjoy those games, but it's like, I, I prefer ATB and turn-based. And then like playing this, it's like, you know, it's like nice to see that you know you can still have these like amazing experiences if games use these gameplay systems and like you know they don't just like throw them out to try to modernize it and make it more flashy and stylish but then like it's like not every game needs to be Devil May Cry 5 or like Nier Automata okay and like not only does not every game need to be that like not every game can be that because it's like 16 is okay I mean I'm not gonna say it's bad but it's like mm, it kind of doesn't it doesn't it doesn't like it's like it's up there but it doesn't like you know it's like it doesn't it doesn't, uh, I don't want to say it doesn't meet or exceed, or exceed, but it's like there's certain parts of just like how that game is, of just like it's kind of a mixed bag of like what it does, and then like certain things it just doesn't do good <laughs> or as good as like you know other games in the genre, like uh, FN Union Chronicles, right? And it's just like, dude, no elemental stuff, no status effects, and those are in this game, and it's like, oh yeah, they kind of like you know, when you like go from that, like you know, 16 to like you know, something that's like got those you know fully fleshed out systems of their of their uh, rpg or even like Baldur's gate 3 you know it's just like <sighs> it's like yeah 16 was like you know it's a cool action game i mean they they did make they say it was an action game so it's like you know but what was lost of like ripping out all the rpg guts and like the turn-based guts and like you know turning it into what it was same thing with i mean to a lesser extent Rebirth and Remake, because those, those are really good, but then it's like, I don't know, I feel like, I kind of feel the same way, but like not as much, because they have, they have the better mechanics and subsystems, as far as like elemental properties and status effects, but it's just, I feel like it's just been modernized to the point of, it kind of loses its identity in a way, it's just like, it's, okay, it doesn't, it doesn't lose its identity, it's got to play like fan service, and like it's, you know, it's, it's, it's its own thing, but I just... I like it's weird. I'm playing it. I'm like I like it, but then in my brain, the back of my mind, I'm like, I think I prefer the 1997 original. It's the whole thing. I don't want to talk about it, but it's yeah. It's just from a gameplay perspective, like you know, visually it's amazing, and like the the graphical fidelity is just like you know, just like you know, just just exploding on. Don't finish that sentence. It's yeah. It's just like it's a it's a visual treat <laughs> that you will like you know be like oh it's so amazing, but then substance wise i mean the substance is there but then it's gotten it got numbered that's a whole thing i don't want to talk about the other scenarios it it deviated like enough 
it i mean okay i'm not gonna say it deviated enough for me to not like it it's just like it deviated enough for it to be its own thing but then like it being its own thing i'm like mm, i prefer the original so you know whereas like capcom has like rejuvenated resident evil to the point of like you know people are like waiting for them to redeem five <laughs> five and six and be like okay yeah like you know that's a whole other can of worms too but like yeah man just the, the Resident Evil remakes are just like mm, how did you remake I mean not to say that the, se- the seven ones aren't it's just you know there's different different ways it's going to be done and some are better than some some people say yeah some developers get it done better than others let's just say that wow this was a really weird start to this one um play through this the videos I'm working on because it's like okay but yeah to keep it in on topic um videos I'm working on so CS um, wow I almost said CS stars Eden Chronicles done Dragon's Dogma 2 done um let me pull up my game list real quick for the rest of the year because uh after summer game fest I'll have a better idea of like what's coming out but like right now it's like I've got stuff written down but then I've got stuff that's like on here without dates but I haven't updated this in a minute so it's kind of it's kind of like it could be updated right like stalker 2 is the last thing on here for september and then there's got star wars outlaw um avowed it's on there if i can get the not blurry not blurry eh. anyway it's like backwards is it better i do this every week i'm sorry or every month it's like it's it's always the same it's always the same but um but yeah, um, Stalker 2, Star Wars Outlaw, I mean, Star Wars Outlaw, I think I'm skipping now because of, <laughs> of all the nonsense with the season pass and, like, the pricing, and just, like, I mean, it's a Ubisoft game anyway, so it's, like, I'm there on my no list, I'm like, mm, I don't really want to support them, <sighs> but then I finally, I, it, I, I was thinking about all these games, like, you know, that have come out, there's something in my hair, what the, what is that, anyway, I've been, <laughs> I was thinking about like all these games that like these publishers that are like evil, and I'm like, man, I want to play these games, but I don't buy them or I don't get them. Or they have like controversies, like the whole um, like Cosby suite is like, why I didn't like pick up Diablo 2 uh, remake, <laughs> another remake, um, and it's like, okay, well I have my Series X right, it has a disc drive, so what I could do is just get the used version of like whatever game from an evil publisher because then I don't get the money and I can play the game and it's like a win-win and I'm like oh yeah but then I'm like it's on Xbox mm, so I guess it depends on the game and like what type of experience it is but that's a solution so I was like hmm yeah that would work um wow I was like what have we been talking about okay so game releases alright so May's game is Cinema Saga Hellblade 2 uh, so I'll be playing one and two because obviously I'm gonna play one before two comes out, and then you know play them back to back to get the whole. You know, because I, I need to revisit that one because it's been a long, long time since I played it. But uh, I looked it up on how long to be. It's not a very long game, so okay. I'm pretty sure the video is still on my channel, and I could, I could have looked it up then, but I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, as yeah, anyway. Then Final Shape in June, September Stalker two. Uh, and then, like I said, Star Wars Outlaw, but I'll probably skip that one, because cause next year I'm for sure going back to the whole, like, just just get stuff when it's half off after, like, 6 to 12 months, uh, with, like, a few exceptions, because GTA is next year and so is Ma Turner, so it's like, those are, like, the only big two. Death Stranding is out as well, but I'm just, I don't know, I, I will probably break and get it, but it's like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I had a bad experience, I got stuck on the final boss, I don't want to talk about it, but yeah. Um... The Metaphor Refantasio, that got a date, but it's not, I haven't updated this yet. Uh, Kintsugami Path of the Goddess is this year, but there's no date, I don't believe. And then Sword of the Sea is on my thingy, but there's no date for that one yet, so, yeah. And those, I have not, and like, besides that, I don't have anything on here, but... In April, like, this last week, I guess there were a bunch of games that had already had, already had a, a, a release dates, and then... <laughs> ended up picking up a bunch of them because i was going to um well, i was going to get the new saga game regardless because i like saga that series um so Sar- saga like emerald something something it's got a odd long title um that came out i picked it up so but all these games are going to be put on the back burner and probably until 
after I've known with Destiny 2, um, Final Shape. And then with that one, I think I'll just play the campaign, which they say is ending when the raid comes out, but it's like, dude, I'm... I guess. Whatever. We'll see. But, um, I have no plans to play, the, play that one, um, long-term, like everything else. That's the last one for me. Like, I'm not getting any expansions or season passes or whatever. I'm just getting the, like, bare-bones, whatever version from launch, um, because I do not want to waste any more time playing that game. And that's all I'm going to say about that, because if you've been watching this channel for however long, I usually don't have anything that's good to say about it, so it's like, I'm I'm glad it's finally over and coming to an end. I'll just say that, because of... Um, what else? Okay, and then September Stalker 2, so that leaves July, August. Oh, actually, I think October is uh, Metaphor Refantasio, so I'll probably take off time for that. Though I think I read that um, the Starfield expansion comes out at the same time, like September, October, so we'll see. I mean, that being said, I've been using my PTO um, more this year, so I don't know if I'll have two weeks off when it, when it does drop. I might just have the one week, but whatever. Um, that's all the can of worms. <laughs> um, let's see. But I think that's everything that's on my list and everything that I can think of that's coming out. I mean, <clears throat> like I said, though, after Summer Game Fest, we'll have a bare idea of like, what's, what's out for the rest of the year. So, and beyond, maybe. But I would, I would really just... Yeah, I, I'm kind of hoping that like the publishers and developers just like rein it in on like game release announcements. <laughs> it's like if it's not in the calendar year or like within the next six months, it's like can we just not talk about it? <laughs> because yeah, can we just can we just get into a place where that's the status quo? Because it's nice to have stuff to look forward to like long term, but it's like you don't really need it. And um, I think it would be better for the industry if that was the case because. To always have like stuff that's like super far off, and like oh man, and then it gets here and it's like it gets it gets delayed or something. And it's just like, cause I, I would feel I feel like there'd be a better a, a better appreciation of the stuff that's out now, because like I said, um, the last week or two, you know, Stellar Blade, uh, Eden Chronicles, F and Sandland, and the Saga game. I picked those all up. There's some there's some robot game I saw on the store. I didn't pick it up. I almost did, but. There's some other stuff too, so it's like there's, I don't know, man. I just there's so much discourse now about like how games are bad or just like how there's a second crash coming. I just like I don't I don't see it. I'm like I disagree, because it's like there's always something to play and there's like plenty of stuff out there to play if you're looking for something to play. I it's like you know unless you're just like super jaded or just like hate <laughs> hate your hobby but don't want to get a new one. Like I just I don't understand all the people that are just like out. Uh, with a vengeance on like everything that comes out and they're like ah let me hate this game before I have even played it or just like <laughs> this game just came out and I hate it and it's terrible it's just like okay <sighs> what, yeah I mean I guess it's always been like the community though has been terrible so it's not the same yeah the more things change right I mean me, me personally it's like taking eight um I'm really annoyed about how they handled the whole premium season passing. Like that, the fact that it even exists, I feel like is completely just. Um, I can't think of the word, but just like yeah, that is like beyond the the line of like how. There's been a lot of scummy like publisher stuff, like 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 that. That's one of them, right? It's like you have a game, the game is priced like a single player. I'm sorry, the game is priced like a full price premium game. And then you release the game. And then you do like content updates for the game via like live stream about the content being added to the game. Then you add to the game a season pass model that has premium currency and premium purchases, which is like but then it's like, okay, but people already paid for this, so like that's that's just completely wrong in my opinion. And it's like the thing that really irks me like right now is like there's not it feels like there's a lot of um like how can we get as much money as we can out of our player base without you know just being transparent about it or just doing it in a fair way so it's like specifically Final Fantasy 16 did this Resident Evil 4 remakes did this that's why I'm I'm, 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 well, I'm when I do do my top games of the year last year that's why I'm about to snub them but like <clears throat> you know you have like the normal edition you have the deluxe edition but it's like 
those come out right but then like six to 12 months on top of that there's even more dlc that you could have just either you know had a tier on the digital edition that it came with or you know somehow bundled it to where it's not like you have people that buy these you know special deluxe basically the premium editions that are higher than the standard editions because that's what i've been doing so i'm not paying 70 dollars for like a normal edition of a game and then it's like you know there's <laughs> there's stuff not in the the special or whatever the f um deluxe whatever the f edition and it's like okay well why isn't it in there or why do you not just have an edition that has all the stuff in it and it's like you know it's like okay so i bought all this stuff and then you have dlc after the fact which you know dlc exists and like yeah but it's like you could have been more transparent or like you know upfront about that 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 was going to be a thing <laughs> and now it's like i'm that's the only reason i'm like going back to like you know six to twelve months man it's like these effing like you know publishers and like developers are just like gouging and it's like not just that but it's just like it feels like such a um a uh like prohibitively expensive hobby now I've, I've been saying this like for a while i mean i did just like harp on the whole like people being negative but like that's not a negative aspect of just like i don't like i enjoy the games i'm playing it's just like the way that the content for them is being added on or added in and it's like i i would be i'd be fine with that if i could just like have the cost up front as opposed to me paying a already prohibitively expensive cost for the product and then it's like oh here's an add-on on top of all the money that you just spent for this version that was more than the standard edition that was supposed to have more than the standard edition but it was still like not a full complete edition <clears throat> and then like you come like yeah and then like you like arrive at the end of the year or like however many years down the line and they never like bundle it completely into like one package like uh like during the ps4 era let's just say because that's like the golden age of that when like you could just wait <laughs> And there'd just be like a ton of like content added into a game and it'd be like the game of the year edition even though if that game like might not have been game of the year or whatever but like you know eventually it all gets like bundled and you get a complete game or i mean you get a complete game without it but like you know all the all the extra stuff that has been added after the launch that is like you know most average users are not going to pay through the nose to get on top of whatever the version is that they got and so like yeah that's that's where i'm at now it's like i'm not paying for all this dlc that's on top of like all the games that are out now in this current era because the price has been raised to it's like i'm not you know i'm not doing that so to like yeah like the price has been raised to like the prohibitively expensive not worth it like level of like okay if you're gonna like have dlc on the like yeah like F in uh, the Ada Ada Wong DLC or the uh, separate ways because you know that's that's F, that's that 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 is literally on the disc of Resident Evil Four for PS2 because I have my copy of the effing or like even Resident Evil Four like whatever those those ones that came out after the, the GameCube version where it's like that stuff was in those versions and then they like took it out and sold it back <laughs> as DLC in the current one and it's like are you effing serious like that's not cool so it's like yeah go off yourself. Um, it's it's kind of like yeah, and like that's like one of the few scenarios where like Capcom did do a, a stupid, um, and then like yeah, I agree with all of like the stuff about the. I mean, I, I I agree with the you know rage about the Dragon's Dogma and like all their other monetizations, but they do that for all their games, so it's like you know whatever, it's, and like I don't spend money on them, so it's like it doesn't affect me, but it is, it is pretty scummy to like do what they're doing, um, but yeah, that's the whole thing. But yeah, I I think I got off topic and I don't know what I was talking about because <laughs> I was on videos I'm working on and I'm like effing video games and they're effing expensive effing tears. And like, yeah, to bring it back to Tekken 8 though, it's like that's kind of why I stopped playing so many fighting games. You know, it's like they just got so into that model of just you've got the base game, you've got a season pass, you've got character packs, you've got costume packs, you've got, you know, XYZ up the wazoo and it's like they never bundle it at the end of that game's lifespan into one thing that you can buy and then they, they there was like a time when they were doing that but then like now it seems like they're not and i'm just like okay well i'm just not gonna play them so it's like i didn't pick up mortal kombat one i didn't pick up fn street fighter 6 and i picked up take a because i was like well i'll pick up take a but 
just I mean Tekken 7 did this too and I did not buy any of that stuff like the the costumes and the characters and all that all the season passes that's your that's your whole that's all other can of worms it's like games with season passes I effing that's a that's a kiss of death for me right now it's like if a game has a season pass I just completely lose all enthusiasm for it and unless it's a season well I mean asterisk if it's like a single player game and it has like stuff coming out because I believe Sea of Stars I, or I'm sorry I keep calling Union Chronicles Sea of Stars for some reason but Union Chronicles had some sort of like pass or something that came with the blog station that I picked up because it was in it but yeah if it's single player it's fine it's like or it's not fine but it's like it's not as bad you know it's going to be or you know what to expect I guess but but it's still like messed up because it's, it's a stupid model and it doesn't and it's like it just I hate it and it's the fact that it's like standard and just it's a whole thing but yeah um I'm trying to get this train back on track here <laughs> about what I've been views I'm working on um well, I guess that is it, right? As far as who's I'm working on, it's like Eden Chronicles. I think I'm gonna finish getting all 120 heroes. I might do New Game Plus. I might not, cause even even Rebirth, I haven't gone back into my New Game Plus stuff. Um, I guess it really just depends on like what I'm playing and like how I feel towards it, cause I really just am enjoying that game, so I will probably just keep playing it. Uh, I am behind on a bunch of my projects I want to get done this year, or just start, because I haven't started any of the Akira Toriyama um, tribute stuff, or any of the deep dives I want to I want to do. Like, uh, let's see, Time Splitters was one. I can't remember the other ones I, I've talked about previously on this series. But yeah, now that I've played Union Chronicles, I'm like really liking it. And I'm like, dude, effing like, yeah, I forgot how effing good turn-based JRPGs can be because it's just the kind of have went away because because publishers really only, only want to make you know games that can be monetized in a multiplayer environment for like billions of dollars now which is ridiculous so it's like you know they go away and then you're like oh yeah but then you play it and you're like oh geez these games are so effing awesome but, so i think i might do a deep dive on uh sui Coden as well but then also that the creator slash director i'd have to look it up of that series also passed away so it'd be like another <laughs> tribute situation uh sadly so that's the whole thing. I'll probably just do that, right? Just do like the Akira Toriyama stuff, and then like the Sui Coden stuff, and then I can always come back to Time Splitters or whatever. A other series got canceled and like <laughs> Left for Dead this year. <laughs> Man, that was, that was such a bummer when like the Time Splitters thing happened and like they were not. It wasn't just Time Splitters. It was like uh, FN Free Radical got shut down. So it's like that's never like they're never gonna be able to make any other you know, games in the future, and I really like, enjoyed their stuff, so it's just, that's such a bummer. I mean, like, the Deus Ex thing, that, ah, the one-two punch of that, man, that was just the worst. It's, like, that, and, like, the whole fact that Embracer's able to just do that, and, like, their CEO or one of their executives make statements of, like, oh, we did it for, or the reason we laid off all these people after we did that stuff, and we, you know, we didn't, we had our Saudi Arabia deal fall through, is because uh, we did it for the shareholders, and money, and blah, 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 and it's just, like, FNFers. But, uh, yeah, man. Um, to recap, get back on track. Views I'm working on. <laughs> the uh, Uden Chronicle stuff is pretty much done. The play that playthrough is done. I just gotta do a, couple, a few extra things on top. Um, Dragon's Dogma 2, I played fan effing tastic. I didn't even. T that's how good Uden Chronicles is. I effing love Dragon's Dogma 2, dude. And, like,. I would say I would say Uden Chronicles surpassed it honestly. Like I think that's my new favorite game this year. Like I played Dragon's Dogma 2. I got completely sucked in. That was like a, Okay, give me a second to go about Dragon's Dogma 2. Like Dragon's Dogma 2 is like I played the first one before that, like Dark Horizon, because I didn't know what I was getting into and I wanted to like, you know, be a bit like in the know of like what to expect. But just like when you play the second game, it actually I feel is like a legit, like generational leap going from like the ps4 well it's it's ps3 based but it's a like ps4 remake i played dark horizon that's when i played um but if you go from like the ps3 version or like dark horizon on ps4 to dragon's dogma 2 i think that is like that that feels like a legit like generational leap like visually uh in terms of technology just like the way all the graphics are like look and then you got like ps5 fast loads and the pawn system is like even ugh, like i ja, ja. The pawn system is just like magical. It's just, it's so good. And it's just like, it's like, to me, it's like, 
it's up there with the Nemesis disk system as like systems that are just really good and like only exist in like a handful of games and it's like more games should do this man it's like it's like because i'm playing it i'm like this is kind of weird right because you've got <clears throat> one player is your player character you have three eye characters so like but then there's like the vocation system which you know you can change your character's class it's hard for me not to say job system because i'm such a final fantasy fan so it's like it works so cohesively it's just so seamlessly and it's so effing good and it's just like the way the, the gameplay is and like you know the way the health bars are displayed <coughs> it feels very like a like a beat em up from like the the like 90s arcade era to me but like you know you get to change your jobs and stuff then it's got the rpg elements and like all that stuff going on and then like this one it's like they just improved everything so like so substantially and it was just like Every time you would like update your pawn at an inn, and they tell you about their adventures in the multiverse, and just that was just all the little like all the little sprinklings of like what they've done with the pawn system in this game. Just about Dragon of Dogma Two, just, just <sighs> it's just just yeah, it's hard for me to just like talk about it and not just like gush all over it because <sighs> it's it's amazing. It's it's effing amazing because it's like you fight you fight the monsters, and then like you know if you've got other pawns from other people. And they've had other experiences. They'll be like, "Oh, this is this is the weakness I know of because my master fought it like this way," or like the way that the pawns speak. And they're like, you know, "Oh, I was doing this in some other world <laughs> with some other person, and now I can show you where this treasure chest is at and just like take you to it." And just, it's effing magical, man. I just, I absolutely effing love Dragon's Dogma too. Like that, like the, the, the however many hours I put in that game, like over the weeks I was playing that. That was just like some of the best times I've had this culture generation, and I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's just, ah, it was just so effing good, man. Just, because, ah, because, like, in my brain, I'm like, four player co op, like, it can't be beat. But then this game, like, it, it, it introduces this thing where it's like you basically have these AI companions, and it's like they're basically as, I'm not gonna say they're better than humans, but it's like you're having as good of a time as you would if you were playing with humans, and it's like not as chaotic because they're so like tethered to you, and it's like that's how it works because you know they're not able to just run off like Borderlands style and just like be wherever, and it's like ah, it's just so having good, and then like it feels like such a massive game because you're on like you're yeah you're on foot and it does that thing that Red Dead did when like you know you're not safe outside <laughs> when the sun goes down and you're outside and you're not on the path <laughs> you're in danger like the, the, the thing that the witcher 3 and to a lesser extent 1 and 2 dude it's like yeah dude if it's nighttime you might not want to you know venture out it's it's kind of a dangerous place and it's just like you feel that tension all the time especially at nighttime because you can barely see in front of you and like the, the lighting sources look so good and like the global um Oh, I, I learned this terminology from a digital foundry because I was like, "What was that called?" It was like global, global something something ray tracing or something global global gi gi girt or something. It, I can't remember, but like, dude, it looks so good. Like when you go in caves and they're lit up by spells, or like the light sources are from like torches or whatever the f. It just it looks so good, and like the textures look so good. And it's just it's such a just just such a good game. It just it looks so good, it plays good, and it's fun time. And like yeah, it's kind of like the playing the first one. It was kind of like this game is weird, man, and it just got weirder and weirder towards the end. And then, <laughs> it's funny because the second game is just like that. Okay, it's not just like that, but it's just like it's very similar to that. And I was like, okay, sure, the story is kind of the story kind of the story kind of falls short and is a kind of flat. But dude, the gameplay is just so effing good, and just all the different vocations and the different skills you get and the combinations and like the. That's yes. That see, that's the other thing. It's like that's how. That's the other thing that makes like the pawn system shine through. Is like when you've got a bunch of different pawns and the different, different setups and different gear, different you know abilities, and like it peanut butter, peanut butter and jellies together so well, and you're just like, this is magical. Like this, you've got like you know, is certain care certain classes work better with certain other ones, and you just like, but then they all work what what like regardless, um, either really good or really badly, right? And it's just like, dude. <laughs> It was just, man, such a good game. Such a good game. So it's like, yeah, I I just have been, have been, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't talk. But yeah, man, people say 2023 was like a great year, but it's like, I think 2024 
so far so good like i've been playing like really good games and like the fun has not stopped and it's like i should be going from game to game and it's like still like yeah next one's this one's having awesome like you know uh you just it's like you play it and it's like oh this is awesome and you go to the next one's like oh that's so awesome and it's like just it's like a fun 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 time that just has not ended because i've yet to play a game that i've been like oh this is not that great so it's like yeah dude it's like taking eight rebirth i think that was the wrong order i don't remember i think taking eight came out first right because rebirth took a long time to play there. like taking eight rebirth f and dragon's dogma 2 Eden chronicles and then now I've got the Stellar Blade, um, the Saga game, Sandland. I still don't start. <clears throat> I still haven't started Unicorn Overlord. That's going to be a summertime game. I think these all are honestly because I just want to go back and play Union Chronicles like all the time now. It's just it's so fucking good, and I'm thinking about it all the time. But yeah, like and then like every but okay. I'm not not to be hyperbolic, but it's like there's a lot of like whispers about oh, there's going to be a, a gaming industry crash again, ah, or just, I mean, I can see where they're coming from with all the, like, you know, games that are AAA taking so long to develop, and then you have nothing in the pipeline. But that doesn't mean that, like, like, that's, like, I wouldn't say that's, that's, like, I'm trying to think how to phrase it. Like, the whole thing where it's, like, a problem in search of a solution or whatever, or maybe backwards. Because it's, like, that's just the byproduct of that. It's, like, I completely disagree with all the people that are like, oh, I want to play a game that's terrible and takes, like, five months to make and looks like crap. And it's like, um, no. I really enjoy these games that take five to ten years to make and are, like, handcrafted experiences that will live with me forever because they're just that, you know, immersive. And just, I play them and it's like, I, all my worries melt away. And it's just like, I'm just in when I'm playing them. And I'm just like, dude, I can't stop. And it's like, I, I, <laughs> and I've like and like you know I currently have like a work life balance where I can like just play so much and like play so many and like this is like the best time for me and it's like you know I just get through one and I'm on to the next one and it's like that was magical and it's like it just doesn't stop and I'm just like this is effing the best and it's like yeah and it's like okay like I I can understand the whole like okay well you know it's not sustainable okay I, I agree with that and like that can be addressed but you know i i would still take this over effing you know ps2 era or not or like or not ps2 era i'm sorry or even like just going back to the crash you know of like et atari you know we're gonna crank this out in less than 12 months who cares what it looks like who cares what it plays like we're gonna make money off of it and uh the quality control is like through the ground because we don't care and everything is trash it all piles up because nobody's buying it and then there's a crash and it's like that's you know that's it's like the complete opposite honestly so it's like i would rather i would rather the companies that can afford to keep going in that in the way that they can because it's like you know cyberpunk um you know some of these other games that like need a bit more time in the oven and then they didn't get it and it comes out and it's kind of like Ugh. and they have to do a flip in like 180 or like you know um What's that? What's the word called? Where they're like, I don't know. You know, you know, like you know, just evasive maneuvers or something, because they're just about to hit an iceberg. Or just like, yeah, just give the games time and polish, and just let them let them cook. Because look at the Insomniac man, like their output. Okay, I mean not to get like too on the whole like yeah, it's it's I don't know it's just like a weird time. I don't I don't understand it either as far as like how they can be like such amazing games and studios, but then like they still get like layoffs and stuff. So it's like it is unsustainable and it should be like like hopefully there's something they can like address that or something. But it's like I don't think it can be because it's a byproduct of capitalism. So it's like you got you know if you have a capitalist system and you've got the people on top making the money, they're just gonna make want to make more money. So it's like you know the all the inputs into that system. <laughs> Of like, how do we extract more value and money? Uh, you know, it's like they're just gonna keep pushing the buttons and pulling the levers uh, because they don't care. <laughs> and it's like it's not. That's that's just something that's like you know baked in the effing trash heap that is capitalism. So it's not gonna. 
resolve itself. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm like way off topic here. We're 40 minutes in. I need to like wrap this up because I'm just like, I'm just rambling about like, oh man, the magical fun times of 2024 when video games were like at their peak before it all came crashing down. But it's not coming. To, it's not going to go crashing down. I, like, if you look at the like the cheese, it's like I don't want to go on like a, a diatribe or like a whole like spiel about this. But like, if you look at what Microsoft did, where they basically are. You know, we put other games everywhere because every screen is an Xbox, and it's and it's like okay, but like, it, it, I don't know, man. It's like, it, it, yeah, it's gonna get weird. I think things are fine for now, but they're gonna get worse. Honestly, I feel because I like what I talked about earlier, dude. It's like games are too expensive, and there's gonna be like a. I think there's gonna be a reckoning. Like, I don't think there's gonna be like you know, a crash per se, but I think we'll see, like, the numbers fall off for sure, because it's, like, you've got so many free-to-play games and, like, free-to-play experiences that are just, like, out there that people have to pay, like, either nothing or very little to, like, enjoy them, and you've got, like, the, yeah, you get, like, the complete opposites, and there's, like, not a lot in the middle, but that stuff exists, man, like, I think it's just gonna take time for, like, that stuff in the middle to, like, uh, you know, get critical mass because it's there um like you know dig like digital fury or is it raw fury i think it's raw fury uh devolver digital on a 505 games there are these like smaller mid-tier publishers out there making like stuff that's not like a triple a 10 year half a billion dollar budget game like it's you know with like smaller teams and stuff so it's not and there's always the indie stuff too but it's like i'm kind of as, not to say I don't like indie games, it's just like I, I feel like that's a bad example to throw out and just be like indie, indie, indie all the time and just be like, oh, that's my counter to AAA because it's like, not the same, man. It's just <laughs> not the same and it's like you could tell. Or, not, or just like it, few, few and far between. Like it sometimes it, it is like, you know, there's stuff that, that gets to like close to that level or like whatever, but it's like, you know, it's like a Sifu versus like a... I'm trying to think, but like, you know, like a scaled down game like Sifu or Sea of Stars versus like an actual, like, you know, DMC5 or FN, you know, stuff that's like taken five to ten years to like develop like Last of Us or something. You know, like you don't have those like rich story games on the indie side. I've, but, okay, I misspoke. That's not true. This, <laughs> whatever. It's, whatever. It's, it, it's all out there across the spectrum, across the board of like what you're looking for. It's just like, you know, you got to find it. And like I said, dude, like there, there's like there's plenty of like mid-tier developers and publishers. I can only remember the publishers right now because, because Raw Fury or is it Digital Fury? I think it's Raw Fury and like Devolver, dude. Devolver's like Devolver semi blew up recently. I feel because they had like a bunch of like cool like just weird games <laughs> that they put out. And it's just like what's Devolver gonna put out next? And it's like you know they have like they have uh, legitimacy, you know. So I, so I think it's just like. As more and more, also yeah, like as more and more situations like Cyberpunk before Fan and Liberty fixed everything, you know, like the, the games are just like, or even like Suicide Squad, you know, like you've got these giant games that are just like either they like all the red flags are there from like the the, the moment you see the game and you're like, is this a, is this a, is this is that a uh, loot score on that UI? Is this a live service game? Does this have a season pass? Is this <laughs> is this multiplayer co-op? <laughs> Is there any single player in this game? Do you have to be online all the time to play this game? Is there DRM? It's like, you know, there's just so many red flags, so many games, like, before they even come out, and you're just like, mmm, this is, like, you know, like, Evan, like, yeah, Suicide Squad is a perfect example. Like, we all knew that was going to be, like, a, like, that game was going to, like, crash and burn and, like, not be a success. And then, like, what did WB Games do? They are, are not, it's, okay, it's not WB Games' fault. It's 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 the whole Zaslav thing. But, like, you know, what was their takeaway? It was like, oh, we're going to do another. We're going to do more life service because we got to, because that's where all the money is. But it's like, not every game can be a Fortnite. And it's just like, oh. Uh, but I think that's also what it is. It's like just, you've got, you know, certain developers and publishers just chasing the money. And it's like, it's, it, yeah, I think yeah, I think that's just like where we're at, right? It's like you've got like so many like corporate scum like entities just like chasing the money or just trying to like extract all of it, and it's just like until that settles down, we're in like a very volatile, I feel, time. But things are things are not like going to just like crash and burn or just like evaporate or 
what's that word called? Not evaporate. Um, when you like, it's it's not evaporate, Dis- disintegrate. There's another word for it, but that can be one of them. Um, vaporize. Yes, like that. That's not gonna happen. You know, it's like, like honestly, I think. I, okay, I was watching this documentary series called um, I think it's called Play with Power, Playing with Power or something. It's on Crackle. It's about docu- It's about Nintendo. It's worth checking out. First episode is like not even like past the Hanafuda Carter or something. It's really good. It's, it's, I, I highly recommend it. But like, I was thinking, okay, this is like a weird aside I should just talk about on a podcast. But like, I was thinking about like how essentially GTA is like the biggest or one of the biggest series like in gaming for like XYZ years, right? But like, none of them have ever launched on a Nintendo platform except for Tantan Wars, and that was like a handheld one. I don't even think it's sold that well. But like that just shows like the strength of that brand and that platform for Nintendo as much as I, or, okay, I'm not gonna get into that, but like you know, for Nintendo to just like you know, they don't need that game. They can still exist because that's the that's like the brand that they've built up, right? Is like they don't have to worry about these you know triple A quad A whatever experiences, and they can just keep checking along, doing what they're doing with their hardware because they've semi solve crack the code of like how to be you know um profitable enough to just keep floating along and then they've got like peaks and valleys and then sometimes they have like you know light in the bottom moments like the weed and just they make enough money that they can (laughs) they'll be able to just like hoard it and then like be sustained for like the next you know 20 30 40 50 years so it's like they're good after the the we and ds at times of just like that that was man they made so much money and then um you know now they got the switch and it's a hit again and it's like you know they just they just follow the model so it's like i think to, to tie it back to what i was saying before you know it's just it's a volatile time and i think we've got all these different like models and different types of games and whatever whatever and like it seem it seemingly everything was like becoming more standardized or it's not like standard that's not the right word or just like things were like fitting into a mold i guess and then like <laughs> and then like all of a sudden it's like you know the, the boat's starting to rock because like things are going the wrong way honestly because it's like saying our games and that's like the tip of the iceberg i guess and it's just like you know it creates turbulence and now it's just like you know it's just, that's just like one thing you know that's like the same dollar game is like one thing and it's just like you know there's all these other things that are still not resolved like season passes and all the stuff i just talked about like live service games and it's just like all these th- all these different entities and all these players involved that would like to make more money or like they're not happy with, with like what they got and they like how do we make more and it kind of just like is like a short term even long long term i guess right it's just like things could get better things get worse before they get better but then you know eventually things will settle down we'll see maybe they don't feel like <sighs> this, yeah i just disagree about the whole like the whole effing industry industry crash again that's just i don't see it happening but i'm sorry i'm like way off topic here i'll try to like wrap this wrap this up because i i mean i i'm going off a template i don't actually have my notes as far as like what i'm going to talk about so this was kind of fun to just ramble on like that but um (laughs) videos i'm working on uh, just go to my video section and my my or my you know live section because that's what I've been playing and that's what I'm gonna be banging views on. But repeat repeat myself yet again. Uh, Hellblade two is next month in May, so I'll be playing Hellblade and Hellblade two. I'll probably jump into some sweet coding. Uh, definitely Yuden Chronicles. Knock out the rest of those heroes. Maybe some. Well, no. Not on YouTube. On Twitch, I'll be streaming Destiny 2, but I won't be streaming on YouTube. Um, Final Fantasy 14. That's also coming out. It's not on my list, surprisingly, but I need to pre order that because that's a whole thing on that with, like, you run out of copies, this, even though it's a digital game. It's a whole weird thing. I'm not even caught up with the MSQ on effing Endwalker after the ending, so I needed to get, or the, the patch content, I need to caught up on that. Man, I got a lot of stuff to play for a flip in the summer, man. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it all. And then, like, on top of that, this is actually what I talk about this video. So it's like, I still have, you know, the stuff that I wanted to play on my channel to, like, have it be done so I didn't have any undone, unfinished playlists when I take a break. But I'm not taking a break, but I'm just, like, relaunching stuff on the channel from different channels. It's, it's a weird thing. Or it's a whole thing. Um, 
Uh, I should just do a separate video, I guess, about that. And then also my game of the years, or my top games of the year for last year. I've, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> I, I will hopefully be getting around to it soon. I meant to do it recently, but then I just didn't get around to like recording it because I've just I've been playing a lot of games. And every time I sit down to play, I'm like, "What are they? Play this game or make this video?" And it's like, mm, "I gotta play a game." Also, all the um the uh 360 store shutdown videos those are done but the ps3 videos as far as like going through each genre i've been slow getting those up i'm sorry like I, I would like to get those done um i think i stopped at sports games but i need to go back and do the rest of those i was going to make a video basically um because there was like there was just so much like negative energy and vibes about the whole like you know the story going down for 360 just like highlighting the um I can't remember what it's called. There's like a streaming service on Series X where you can um, stream a bunch of old games. But there's that, and there's also the um, Arcade Archive series. They have a bunch of like SNK games and some other games. But like there's there's a bunch of like stuff on that that's like you know if you want to look up an old game. I mean they don't have like you know it's not like Virtual Console levels uh, library or PS1 classics back in the day. <laughs> so it's a whole thing but it's better than nothing I guess is the point which is ant stream mark ant stream on live or something I'll make a video about it but it's that I, I haven't bought my uh, membership you can buy like a lifetime membership it's like 80 bucks I need to do that eventually gosh I'm sorry I'm like, I'm like sitting here for like an almost an hour I, I'm so sorry I didn't mean to go on for this long it just happens sometimes I talk about games and it just happens this is why I need to make another podcast because if I don't and I try to do time and and sometimes this is what happens I just talk and talk and talk and it's like if I did this every week to, to siphon off the my, all my like stream of consciousness it was like not be crazy like this sometimes um but yeah those are the videos I'm working on uh, playthroughs and streams, obviously, Eden Chronicles and Hellblade 2, because, yeah, or Hellblade 1, then Hellblade 2. <sighs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else, because I don't think, yeah, I'm not going to start any of those other games, like Stellar Blade, um, Saga, and Sandland, I'm not going to get around to any of those anytime soon. I think I'm just going like, to put those all in the summer after Final Shape, so I don't have any, like, distractions. And I can just like focus on other stuff as I, you know, after I finish Union Chronicles. Because this has been like really fun for me. It's like, I'll finish a game, move on to the next one, finish a game, move on to the next one. And it's like, I was doing a really good job of like one at a time. I was like, dude, one at a time, man. And then this like week, this last few weeks happened. And like all of a sudden, it's like a bunch of games at once. And I'm like, oh, I shouldn't buy these all at once. And I'm like, ah, oh. but I'm like, I really like being able to just like buy them and play them and like you know get through them. Like this is not been, this has not been the case for such a long time for me. To where it's like I could like enjoy the hobby as much as I've been enjoying enjoying it this last uh, I guess console generation for, for the most part. But yeah, or like year year and a half <laughs> after the dark times that we have been in. Uh, but uh, yeah. I mean, that's what you're thinking about Eden Chronicles. There's a lot of really good mini games in that one. You've got like a racing on the sand mini game. I effing love that game. I can't stop talking about it. It's so effing good. You've got a card mini game. You've got a cooking mini game. There's some other mini games, but dude, it's just like, it's so effing. Just, it's so good. And it's just like all killer, no filler, just loaded with stuff. And it's just, so, it's, I think it's just refreshing, right? Like that's, I think that's why like the analogy I made is like, you know, it looks like a PS2 game. It plays like a, it has the polish of a PS4 game. It has the heart, soul, and ambition of a PS1 game and the scope and scale of a PS1 game before like, you know, budget, budgetary, budgetary constraints of future generations were like, eh, we gotta cut this, we gotta cut this, we gotta cut this. And we ended up with like, you know, 20 hour JRPGs that are like not even close to the classics. Um, and it has, yeah, yeah, it's got like, yeah, the, the, the polish of a PS4 game and the effing bells and whistles of a PS5 game with the, you know, instant loads and just the haptics and just, ah, oh, so effing good, just effing. But that's the other thing is like, there's pixel art in that game on some of the cutscenes and like some of like the in-game like cutscenes look so good. 
and like the character models and the pixel art is just like so on point in like the like the 4k like like this like graphics that, that we have in the modern times and it's just like dude if they could have did this like back in the day just oh just it just like it makes me like wish for like some sort of like throwback to like a Final Fantasy game, or just like because of like the scenario is the way it is in Union Chronicles. If like if there was a um, it's like man, dude, I would like I would just like love it if they did some sort of like Final Fantasy like crossover with all the games. I'm sorry, if Final Fantasy crossed over with itself, I mean like all the like Final Fantasy like one to sixteen, but like not eleven and fourteen because they're MMOs. And you had like the entire cast like get pixelated and demicked into like some sort of like crazy JRPG, but they b- because it's scaled down graphically, you can do more, which is what Union Chronicles feels like when I'm playing. Because I'm just like, dude, there is so much in this game, <laughs> and it's like a giant open world. It's kind of it's kind of weird to play that and Rebirth at the same time, dude. Because I'm like, I'm playing it, and I'm, like on the one hand, you've got Rebirth that does like it's open world, but it feels like modern and bloated. But then you play FN Uden Chronicles and it and it feels like the golden age of like what we had before and like you know, when you'd get on an airship and you can go across the world and like do whatever the F and just like you just don't get that anymore and it's just like it's so refreshing and I think that's like why I love it so much and it's just it's just it's just so it just yeah, I have just connected with it so much and I just can't stop playing it or thinking about it and just I love that game and it's just so effing good. And that's why I'm like like I'm like, dude, I just gotta play I gotta go back and play the other shitty code and it's just it's just because they just don't make them like they used to, man. I think that's what it is. It's like I play it, and it's just like it does such it does such a good job, harkening back to a time from the past of like or like you know doing things in a way that was done before that is not done now. In like the way it's done now is um, arguably in the worst way, or just like not as good. And you're just reminded of like how good things were in like in the in the in the good sense it's like yeah okay like they had like multiple discs and the load times are kind of long but it's like and like you know the the graphics weren't nearly as good but it's like dude it's like the scale of those games and like just you know like like final fantasy 7 remake and final fantasy 7 rebirth those games are not like complete final fantasy 7 1997 is a complete game you get three discs of an adventure you don't get like chapter or part one or part two it's like nah dude you get the whole effing thing you get effing you get you get off the the trade in midgar to you're fighting in the crater and that's the entire experience you don't get oh this part to this part because that's all we could you know that's the time that's you know the time and the budget man that's all we had it's just and i think that's what i like about you in chronicles is like i'm playing it and i can just like feel all of that coming through of just like it's it's unencumbered you know it's like it's 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 like it's like it's like it's like, it's not without limits but it is just like you can feel like the limitations being lifted of the modern like status quo of games of just like what it imposes on certain limitations of design and like stuff and just I, i'm sorry to repeat myself and go back to Eden chronicles but just when i brought it up and i was looking at my notes i was like oh <laughs> sorry like I, I saw Gwyn here and I was like, oh yeah, there's a card game. It just it's a really good card game and I really like the card game. And you can even do something that you can do in Rebirth, because in Rebirth there's only one part of the game where you can play your party members and that's it when you're on the ship. And guess what? <laughs> in Union Chronicles, when you go to litter the, go to go to litter. Go to the card vendor dude person and you're like, Hey, I wanna play some cards and it's got the entire list of all your alliance members. You can play them all however many times you want, whenever you want, and it's effing awesome. So it's just like, dude, you and Chronicles, dude, just, it brought it back for me. I was like, I, <laughs> I'm sorry to like go on another tangent. I'll, I'll wrap it up here because I'm at the end. Um, I, actually, let me get to the end real quick before I start another tangent. So <laughs> I just talked about playthroughs and streams, but yeah. There's no reason to, I'm not going to go over it again. Uh, Hellblade, blah, blah, whatever. <laughs> Some Destiny here and there. Final Fantasy XIV, yada, yada, yada. Union Chronicles, so you couldn't. Maybe some other stuff. Uh, vlogs, no new vlogs. How to DIY and other stuff. Nothing nothing changed in there. Change the stuff on the channel. I did have time, man. I, 
I got lost if I would like to do in uh, the IRL land, not to connect it to IRL stuff, because that's completely different, but it's just, I just have not had, I mean, I've had the time, I'm just, I'm choosing not to, because I'm I'm choosing to enjoy my life, and not be like, oh man, I've got this thing to do, because I'm an adult, it's like, hmm, or I could just not, or I could do it later, or I could just like, you know, I've, yeah, I man, it's really weird, I got really bad at procrastinating lately, and it's just, but I haven't had like any bad consequences from it, so it's like, I still have like, I, I, can, I can still like, you know, I still have it together, where it's like, I get stuff done, it's just, I just completely like re uh, allocated all my time to like you know I'm just super into gaming right now and it's, it's the best. It's it's weird because it's like the best and the worst if if I if I'm being honest. But it's like I would rather enjoy my life than hate my life. So it's like it's one of those. But um, back to the Final Fan or the <laughs> Union Chronicles thing. Ah, I forgot, what was I saying? I don't remember now. But um, crap. I was saying something about how awesome it is. But that's not what I was going to say. I don't remember now. No, I forgot. Uh, mini games, car games. Hmm, it's whatever. It's, it's really good. Check it out if you're in a chamber share RPGs. I've, man, I had a whole thing I was going to say, and now I'm just like, what was I going to say? I don't remember now. Um, whoopsie. Oh, I remember now. Okay. So. Sometimes I'll feel like, like uh, I'm stuck in the '90s, right? And then like, I remember back in the day, when I was a child, how people would say like, kind of like as a, uh, like, I guess it was probably meant as like an insult, right? It was like you know people would say things about people being stuck in the '70s or whatever, but then I, I think it's just nostalgia. I don't think it's that people are, are stuck in any era from the past because that's not really temporarily possible for one, but, um, but I think, like, you know, people just, like, wear, you know, like, or, like, you know, when they say that, I think they would mean, like, people that just, like, still wear, like, wear bell bottoms and, like, crap, all that stuff, all the old-fashioned from the old times, but I think they just, like, had nostalgia for, like, the past, but, like, lately, whenever I think about, like, because a lot, of, like, a lot of the time, I will be, like, a, a 90 evangelist of, like, oh, man, wasn't, weren't the 90s the best, or blah, 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 or I'll think this to myself, I won't say it out loud, and, like, <laughs> But then, like, when I really think about it, I'm just like, wait a minute. If if I was stuck in the 90s, I would never get the PS2, which is my favorite console of all time. And, like, I, I just, like, that's my main thing I think about. It's like, actually, <laughs> if I'm stuck in the 90s, I don't get PS2. So I'm just like, hmm. That's something I think about a lot now. And it's just like, would it be worth it if I could be in the 90s forever but never get PS2? And I'm just like, hmm. No, so I'm just like, I may like the 90s, I may love the 90s, but I would not want to be forever stuck in the 90s, as much as I call it a golden age. That being said, when I think about why do I, why do I not feel the way about the 2000s, not not hard to uh, come up with an answer. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, not it's it's not hard to answer that question when you think about what happened in 2001. And it's like, oh yeah, we just got thrown into a whole like era of terrorism and war. Wasn't that great? Sarcasm. I'm being sarcastic because it wasn't great. It was the worst, and it kind of like lasted for twenty effing years until we, and like we get out of we get out of Afghanistan, and, like it's, and it just doesn't get any better. And it's just like okay, I'm I'm kind of going into IRL section now, but we already already know what I'm going to say in IRL section. But I'm going to say that, and I'm going to wrap it up here because uh, I need to get back to playing Union Chronicles. That game's effing awesome. But yeah, um, you know. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm trying to. Wow, I'm trying not to butcher this at the end. I'm like, okay, I do say the thing, don't I? Where it's like, you know, um, Tiananmen Square, 1989, Free Hong Kong, uh, Grassy Ukraine, Glory Ukraine, and then uh, Free Palestine, ceasefire now. So yeah, that's my IRL section again. Uh, cause I forget what IRL section was, and I'm like, dude, let me just say something else to sign off every now or, or now that can like, you know, fit into that mold. Um. <laughs> it's like yeah whatever I would go, go more into the, the whole 90s thing but it's like that's that's the main thing is like you know as much as I love the 90s when I really think about it I'm like okay it was it wasn't as perfect I guess as I would like to think it was <laughs> I, I'm not going to get into it but like yeah I, I think about like a lot of other geopolitical things happening and like mm, not, not quite the best I think it's just nostalgia of, I think it's just I think man yeah, it's like nostalgia is just like a natural occurring phenomena of like whenever your past was that you think about it in like a more idolized 
way than it was because I'm like, actually, the 90s, mm, yeah, LA riots, <laughs> not not that great. It's like, yeah, I guess like when I think about it more deeply, right, beyond the whole like, oh man, was it more? video games and stuff from the 90s. But then when I, th- when I think about it that way, I'm like, oh wait, the PS2 wasn't in the 90s, so... Because even you go to 99, you get Dreamcast, but like, you, that's what I was thinking about, actually. I was like, okay, you get Dreamcast, but like, you only get the launch. <laughs> but you don't get PS2, but it's like... that. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a solid argument to make, actually. It's like, okay, you get Dreamcast, though. <laughs> it's like, you don't, get, you don't get PS2, but you get Dreamcast, though. It's like, hmm. And then you get the launch games, and it's like, ooh, okay. So it's like, you know... But that's the thing, dude. That was like that was the bar, like effing Soul Calibur, dude. Just like seeing that, like I couldn't tell you. Okay, I I I could, but I'd have to think about it. It's like there are very few games, like since Soul Calibur One on on Dreamcast, that I've like looked at and been like, this game looks better than any game I've ever seen in my life. Like, it's so, because it, it kind of like just set the standard for like you know, like in a pre HD era of like what you know of like the the visual like language of video games for like the next 20 effing years and it's just so effing good and just you see, like yeah we have 4k now and like it's a better resolution but it's like they kind of yeah it's like if you look at a fighting game from then and now it's like okay it's the same thing you got a health bar you got characters and it's like but like you know you had that like initial holy crap look at this like what we can do now and like we kind of haven't really done that, I feel like since at least not as often. It, only when like you slow things down and look at them like in slow motion, or like have people count the pixels for you like in Digital Foundry. But like you know, I would say for the most part, it's like not to say that's a bad or that's a or that that's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing to get away from like the whole graphics chase. But anyway, I'm rambling here for over an hour talking about video games life and uh stuff and things and i'm just gonna hit it there because i i touched on everything i wanted to touch to <laughs> touched on everything i wanted to touch to it touched on everything i wanted to touch on um talked about everything specifically Uden chronicles and how i'm just in effing love with that game right now it's effing the best uh yeah i yeah i okay to go back to like you know change the stuff on the channel i really need to like do more stuff on my channel, like, where I can do more videos or just whatever. I, I mean, I'm trying to, like, you know, like I said, wind it down so I can wind it back up and do all these things, but I just have not had any progress. So after Final Shape, you know, it's like, there's not a lot coming out, so I'm hoping I can just, like, you know, bang out some of these other games and then, like, get back to that. Because I haven't even made any progress on my mass effect playthrough for like the 2000 subscriber tribute so, or, that, or celebration rather <sighs> so i'm just like way behind on a bunch of projects but i'm playing a bunch of games and having a fun time so considering like yeah 2019 to 2021 20, and how much that all sucked it's like i'll take it because i think about that a lot too i'll just be like yeah there's a reason i think i am like just this into it right now and it's because i think about how crappy the last few years sucked and it's like if things go a certain way in november it's going to be back to that because it's like we're kind of on the brink again and it's like yeah just it's like sometimes things get worse before they get better that's because that's usually how that happens so it's like that's kind of where we're at it's like ugh effing sucks all right but yeah that's that's an rl section thing to talk about and i'm i'm done with rl section for the week or the month yeah, um, good in here. So yeah, um, links and stuff in the description. Feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, favorite with your f- favorite. <laughs> Feel free. I'm not gonna edit this. Feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, favorite, share with your friends or not. That's cool too. And until you see or hear from me again, thanks for watching. And uh, oh, I thought of something. It's Ah, uh, it's whatever. Some, whatever. I'll sign off. <laughs> Until you see or hear from me again. Thanks for watching, and I'm now signing off.